A shallow magnitude 6.0 earthquake struck western Turkey on October 27, 2025, near the small town of Sindurga, jolting a landscape that has long lived with the memory of larger ruptures. Why does this country, wedged between colliding plates, endure such frequent and often violent shaking? Could a relatively moderate quake like this be a prelude to something larger, or is it simply the earth quietly rebalancing itself? What does the pattern of past ruptures tell us about where strain is stored and where it might break next? Those questions sit at the heart of any investigation into Turkey's seismic hazard, and the answers are rooted in geological processes that span millions of years and hundreds of kilometers beneath the surface. At 1948 and 28 seconds, coordinated universal time, on October 27, 2025, the United States Geological Survey and Regional Networks located the earthquake at approximately 39.233 degrees north, 28.228 degrees east, about four kilometers east-southeast of Sundurga. The hypercenter was shallow at about eight kilometers depth, which is roughly five miles beneath the ground. Shallow earthquakes of this kind tend to cause stronger shaking at the surface than deeper events of equal moment because their energy has less rock to attenuate it before it reaches buildings and people. The Sundurga quake occurred in western Anatolia, a region shaped and reshaped by the overlapping forces of subduction, collision, strike-slip motion and continental extension. To understand why Turkey is so seismically active, one must start with the long story of plates. Over the last 50 million years or so, the African and Arabian plates have been converging northward toward Eurasia, progressively closing remnants of the ancient Tethys Ocean and carrying seaside crust under continental margins. The modern Mediterranean Sea is the last vestige of that Tethian realm. This slow but relentless convergence, ranging roughly from 4 to 10 millimetres per year in many parts of the Mediterranean, which is about 0.16 to 0.4 inches per year, has created a mosaic of tectonic processes. Where oceanic lithosphere sinks beneath continental or other oceanic plates, subduction zones form. Where continental blocks are squeezed and cannot escape upward, they move laterally and generate major transform fault systems. Both kinds of behaviour are present around Turkey, and the boundaries between them are messy and energetic. One of the dominant players is the North Anatolian Fault, a right lateral strike-slip fault system that more than a century of seismic history has shown to be capable of producing devastating earthquakes. The Anatolian microplate, squeezed by the Arabian plate from the east and nudged by Africa from the south, is effectively being expelled westward toward the Aegean Sea. Much of that westward escape occurs along the North Anatolian Fault, where the fault accommodates on the order of 23 to 24 millimetres of motion per year, which is roughly 0 0.9 to 1.0 inches per year. Over decades and centuries, that steady drift builds elastic strain along locked patches of the fault until they fail in sudden rupture. The historical sequence of major earthquakes that marched westwards across the North Anatolian Fault during the 20th century is a chilling illustration of how strain can transfer along a fault system, with large ruptures appearing to load adjacent segments until they too fail. Turkey's historical record reads like a catalogue of major ruptures. In 1939, a magnitude 7.8 quake near Erzincan devastated the eastern part of the country. In 1999, a magnitude 7.6 earthquake struck near Izmit, and later that same year, an event of magnitude 7.2 hit near Duzce. 
those twin ruptures were among the most catastrophic of the modern era. More recently, on February 6, 2023, a sequence that began with a magnitude 7.8 quake and included a magnitude 7.5 event shattered parts of southern Turkey and northern Syria, causing tens of thousands of casualties and wide-ranging destruction. Other notable large events include magnitude 7.5 and 7.3 earthquakes throughout the 20th century in western and central Turkey, and a spate of magnitude 7s in the 1960s and 70s that affected western Anatolian basins. The pattern is unmistakable. Where the plates interact most strongly, large earthquakes have recurred repeatedly over centuries and millennia. But the North Anatolian Fault tells only part of the story. Western Turkey, where Sunduga lies, is dominated by a different tectonic regime, extension driven by back arc processes. Off the southern coast of Greece, the Hellenic subduction zone sees the African plate subducting beneath the Aegean. As that oceanic slab sinks and rolls back toward the south, it exerts a tensional force on the overlying crust. The geological consequence is north-south extension across the Aegean and western Anatolia. The crust thins, normal faults form, and Graben basins drop down. These north-south extensional stresses, created by slab rollback and back arc spreading, generate frequent normal fault earthquakes throughout the region. The Aegean and western Turkey are thus a landscape of competing forces. While the Anatolian block is being squeezed westward by Arabia, the overriding plate to the south is being pulled apart by the retreating subducted slab. That combination of strike-slip motion on some boundaries and extension on others produces a complex and seismically potent environment. Normal faulting, characteristic of extensional regimes, is the likely mechanism for the recent Sundurga event. The earthquake's shallow depth is consistent with rupture on upper crustal normal faults that dissect western Anatolia. The Simav fault system and its associated fault strands have been linked in past studies to magnitude 7 earthquakes that occurred in the region during the late 1960s and early 1970s, including the large Demirzi and Gediz shocks. The geology of western Anatolia shows a pattern of east-west-oriented normal faults that slice across the landscape, accommodating the north-south stretching. Each rupture on these faults relieves a portion of the accumulated extensional strain. But other faults nearby may take on some of the transferred stress, potentially changing the local and regional hazard profile. Shallow, crustal earthquakes in extensional settings such as this often generate conspicuous surface effects, fault scarps, ground subsidence, and sedimentary disturbances in basins. Because the crust here is comparatively thin and broken into many small fault blocks, rupture lengths for individual earthquakes may be limited, which tends to constrain magnitudes. For that reason, many normal fault earthquakes in western Turkey register in the magnitude 5 to magnitude 6 range, though larger events are not impossible, particularly when multiple fault segments rupture in a connected sequence. Conversely, the strike-slip faults of the North Anatolian system have produced some of Turkey's largest historical earthquakes because they can rupture for tens to hundreds of kilometers in a single event and thus release far greater energy. An essential concept in seismic hazard is that of a seismic gap, a section of a fault that has not ruptured for a long time and so may have accumulated substantial strain. The Marmara Sea, the inland sea just south of Istanbul, contains a notorious seismic gap along the Marmara segment of the North Anatolian Fault. paleo studies, geodetic measurements and seismic monitoring indicate that parts of the Marmara Fault are creeping, but significant stretches are locked 
and storing strain. The last large earthquake to rupture that Marmara segment occurred more than two centuries ago. Scientists have warned for years that a major rupture there could produce a quake of magnitude 7 or higher, with profound implications for the Istanbul metropolitan region, which is home to more than 15 million people. The probability estimates vary among models, but many place a substantial likelihood of a large Marmara earthquake within the coming decades, if the locked segments remain unrelieved. Another aspect that makes Turkey's earthquakes particularly hazardous is the juxtaposition of active faults and populous, historically dense settlements. The tectonic processes do not slow for urban growth. Cities, towns and critical infrastructure have grown across formerly rural, faulted landscapes, and in many cases the built environment predates modern understanding of seismic hazard. While building codes and retrofitting initiatives have improved in recent years, the geological reality is that even moderate quakes can produce disproportionate damage if they strike vulnerable structures. Moreover, the variability of ground conditions, from stiff bedrock to deep alluvial basins that amplify shaking, means that local geology can make the difference between negligible damage and severe destruction. From a tectonic mechanics perspective, an earthquake such as the Zindurga event also invites investigation into how stress redistributes through the crust after rupture. When a fault segment slips, it releases stress locally, but can increase stress on adjoining segments. This is the reason why sequences of earthquakes sometimes occur along a single fault. Rupture in one segment can trigger failure in a nearby patch that had been slowly accumulating stress. The westward propagating cascade of major quakes along the North Anatolian Fault through the 20th century is a dramatic historical example of this process. However, the specifics are complex and case-dependent. In extensional provinces like western Anatolia, stress transfer may take different forms and involve normal faults that are not as straightforwardly connected as the long, linear, strike-slip faults. Seismologists will analyse aftershocks, measure small shifts in the ground with geodetic networks, and model Coulomb stress changes to assess which nearby faults have been brought closer to or further from failure by the Sundurga rupture. Seismicity frequency in Turkey is high at multiple scales. The Mediterranean region exhibits some of the world's most intense earthquake activity because of the confluence of subduction, continental collision, and transform motion. Typically, western Anatolia experiences numerous small to moderate quakes each year, with occasional larger events that can reach magnitude 6.5 or 7 when conditions align for extended rupture. The North Anatolian Fault has produced multiple magnitude 7 and larger earthquakes over the past century, and historical catalogues record frequent damaging quakes across Anatolia over centuries. This pattern suggests that while moderate quakes may relieve local stress, they do not eliminate the long-term hazard posed by locked and loaded fault segments elsewhere. Comparing the Sundurga earthquake to Turkey's larger historical events helps clarify scale and significance. The magnitude 6.0 event released far less seismic energy than the magnitude 7.8 Karaman Marash rupture of 2023, or the magnitude 7.6 Izmit quake of 1999. For context, each whole number increase on the magnitude scale corresponds to roughly 31 times more energy release. That means that a magnitude 7 earthquake emits approximately 31 times the energy of a magnitude 6, and a magnitude 8 would release nearly a thousand times more energy than a magnitude 6. While the Sundurga quake might produce localized damage, and strong shaking, 
it is not on the same physical scale as the great plate boundary ruptures. Nevertheless, its occurrence is a useful reminder of the underlying processes at work and how those processes can, over time and under the right geometric and stress conditions, produce much larger and more damaging earthquakes. Scientific monitoring of Turkey's seismicity is extensive and ongoing. Seismological networks record waves from every detectable event, while dense arrays of global navigation satellite system stations measure slow, millimetre-scale motions of the crust. Scientists combine seismic, geodetic and geological information to estimate slip rates on faults, identify locked versus creeping patches, and model the probability of future earthquakes. The patterns that have emerged, such as the accumulation of strain on the Marmara segment and the general westward migration of major ruptures along the North Anatolian Fault, form the basis for both hazard assessments and public policy aimed at reducing risk. If there is a single geological lesson from the Sundurga quake, it is that Turkey's tectonic architecture is inherently cooperative in producing earthquakes. Subduction and slab rollback set up extension and normal faulting in the west. Continental collision and lateral escape drive large strike-slip ruptures along the North Anatolian Fault. And the mosaic of active faults means that strain can accumulate quietly for decades or centuries before releasing in sudden, sometimes catastrophic ruptures. Each earthquake, whether modest or massive, is a manifestation of those deep processes. For scientists, each event is also a data point. The aftershocks, the precise focal mechanism, the surface deformations, and the pattern of stress change all help refine our understanding of which segments are most likely to break next. For citizens and policymakers, the practical implication is clear. Geological processes do not negotiate with urban planning. Preparedness, retrofit programs, and adherence to modern seismic design principles remain the most effective ways to reduce loss of life and infrastructure when the next large earthquake inevitably occurs. The Sindurga earthquake should be seen as a call to continue and accelerate those efforts rather than as an isolated anomaly. Geology ensures that Turkey will continue to be shaken. Human choices determine how well the country weathers that shaking. Ultimately, the magnitude 6.0 quake that struck near Sundurga in late October 2025 is part of a long continuum of seismic activity driven by the converging African and Arabian plates, the subducting and retreating slab beneath the Aegean, and the westward escape of the Anatolian microplate along major strike-slip systems. The shallow depth and local extensional mechanism explain the character of the shaking. The regional tectonic context explains why such events are frequent and why, in other places along adjacent faults, much larger earthquakes have and will continue to occur. The geological narrative underlying Turkey's seismicity is not simple, but it is intelligible. A landscape shaped by collision, subduction, rollback, lateral escape, and extension, processes that, acting together, make the faults of this country inherently dangerous. If you found this deep dive into Turkey's powerful geology and the forces shaping our planet insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more in-depth explorations of Earth's hidden dynamics. And don't just stop there. Tap that hype icon to help this story reach a wider audience and keep the world informed about the planet's restless heartbeat beneath our feet.